order the Tuesday, August 6, 2024, 6 o'clock meeting, just a few minutes behind schedule due to throw discussions during closed session. At this time, I would like to ask Commissioner Stroud to do the invocation for our board as we move forward <coughs> making decisions for our county. Our gracious Heavenly Father, as we come to you tonight, we ask you to, to open our ears, open our hearts, open our minds. We ask you to give us the wisdom to uh, be strong enough to make decisions for good decisions, good godly decisions for the citizens of Iredell County, that we do it for no selfishness, no uh, personal gain, that we do it uh, for the good of this county and the good of the people of this county and, and this nation. Lord, tonight we're, we're minus one of our, our own. We ask you to be with the Brown family and uh, the passing of uh, Commissioner Brown's mother and that you grant the, him and his entire family your, your love, grace, and mercy. <clears throat> Lord, you ask you to be with those in harm's way and those that don't know you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge. pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Manager Moll, we have some adjustments to the agenda this evening. Would you please go over those? Absolutely. We do have three adjustments. The first one is an addition under appointment before the board, and that is... Um, the Iredell County Council on Aging to present and receive approval of fiscal year 25 home and community care block grant funding plan. We also have an addition under administrative matters, which is item 8.10, and that's the approval to extend the current resolution period for the opioid settlement funds. And then finally, we have addition under appointments to boards and commissions, which is the home and community care block grant appointment. Thank you. Motion to approve the adjusted addenda. Make a motion. Thank you, Commissioner Stroud. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you for that unanimous adjustment to approval. No presentations of special recognitions or awards. However, we do have an appointment before the board this evening. Manager Mull, do you have anything information-wise before she begins? Well, I'd like to introduce uh, Jennifer Bearclough, and she is a practiced so uh, <laughs> she is with Iredell County Council on Aging, and as I, as I said before, she's going to present and um, needs to have approval from the board mm -hmm. of the fiscal year 25 home and community care block grant funding plan. Jennifer? Hello. Um, good, after, good evening, uh, Madam Chair uh, and members of the board. Um, I first want to thank you uh, for your continued support of the block grant and the older adults here in Iredell County. Um, and I want to start with sharing some of the wins and the successes of last year's funding. Um, I think it's always important, you know, as we come before you each year and ask for uh, the approval and the match for these funds, that we also share with you what your dollars did last year. Um, so I want to just share um, <laughs> last year's numbers. Um, and so this is the fiscal year. So last year with our block grant money, uh, we were able to provide over 20,000 trips um, to older adults 60 and over um, here in Iredell County. And that covers the entire county. Um, that's taken individuals from um, doctor's appointments in Mooresville to Statesville, Union Grove, um, Troutman, uh, all over the county, and not just doctor's appointments, but um, trips to the senior center to, uh, to get your hair done, to get uh, your needs met at uh, Christian Mission or uh, NC Feed, uh, to the nutrition sites, and so on. So with those dollars, we were able to serve uh, 20, uh, over 20,000 trips. Um, we served 35,600 approximately meals um, to individuals here in Iredell County over the age of 60. And so those were the home-delivered meals um, in addition to the congregate meals at one of our uh, four congregate sites uh, located in Troutman, Mooresville, uh, Statesville, um, and again, Harmony. Uh, additionally, uh, our in-home services, which includes respite care, uh, chore services, personal care, and the adult day services. Uh, with the block grant, we provided over 12,000 hours. Um, and then in addition to that, with additional funding, I think it's important to note um, that that total is closer to 40,000 
um, hours provided, and that is such a huge service and need um, here in Iredell County, um, that in-home services. Um, and then we also provided over $300,000 worth of uh, senior center services to over 4,500 older adults. So between the two senior centers here um, in Ardell County in Mooresville and Statesville, um, we were able to uh, use those funds in um, addition to others that we receive. Um, so I feel like those are great successes um, in the last year. And while that's not a reflection of all the services provided, that is a reflection of what is provided through the block grant, um, which is a large majority of the funding that we have here um, in Ardell County for the Council on Aging. Um, this year, you have, you'll have seen some changes to the block grant committee. Um, I'm happy to report that our uh, committee is back in full force. Um, so it had taken some hits during COVID um, and just transition. And um, so we now, as you know, you've appointed five new individuals to our block grant committee. And we're very excited about that um, and excited for what that means for the aging community here in Ardell County um, to have so many additional individuals excited um, and to advocate for the needs. As if you um, are paying attention to to politics and what is going on right now, the Older Americans Act is actually up for reauthorization and there's a lot of conversation and advocacy needed. So having those individuals in our corner is also very helpful. What we were faced with this year, however, as a committee, was we saw a loss in our block grant funding. And I provided that in your packet, um, I believe, showing you uh, what each county in our region um, received. And so that's actually based on um, demographics and census data. It has nothing to do with anything that our county has done um, or the services that we need. It's based on the older adults moving into our area, um, the, um, the income for those individuals. And so while we have seen a large increase in older adults, some of those older adults are falling in a higher um, bracket uh, for income. And then also rural area. Um, this past year, Iredell County saw an expansion in its rural area, but that's not reflected in the census data that they've pulled from. So we do hope to see an increase um, next year in funds based off that, um, that data. But we did see close to $23,000 of a decrease in funds. That still keeps us above two years ago uh, when we saw an increase. But I just wanna share with you, while $23,000 may not sound like a lot out of a million, that is an impact. And so I did those numbers for you. Um, and so we were tasked with you know, figuring out how to make those changes and those cuts across the board. And so that the $23,000 equates to um, approximately 766 hours of adult daycare, um, 1,815 congregate meals, uh, 2,396 home delivered meals, um, 681 hours of level one personal care, or level one uh, in-home services, which is chore, 700 hours of personal care, uh, 1,200 transportation trips, um, 511 hours of adult day health, and then 679 hours of personal care. And while that's individual numbers, we had to look at those numbers and decide where we needed to make some changes. Um, additionally, this year, you'll see some changes in what we've uh, chosen to fund. Uh, we have added adult day health to the list of items, and that's really to, um, to reflect the accreditation of our Dell Adult Day Services, uh, previously Elder Center, and their new accreditation with Adult Day Health. Um, so we did move some of the funds from Adult Day Care down to Adult Day Health. And then we've also in added uh, level three personal care. And so that's providing care for someone who might come home with um, an ostomy or a catheter and needs additional services and care. And those are all at no cost to the individual. But what that does reflect is that we're seeing a need for those services in our county because our adults are not only aging, they're aging quickly and their needs are out, outside of the current um, capacity. So we have added those services to the code this year so that we're able to meet the need of those individuals that we weren't serving. Um, and we're excited to do that. We actually have a list of individuals to start on all those. Um, lastly, I want to share 
Uh, I know you guys have been in session all afternoon, so I want to keep it fairly brief. Um, I did include with our signature page some information and some demographics for you guys to look at. Um, I think that the number for aging, um, I think Beth might have these, um, the information for aging in not only Iredell County, but in our state is so important. So when you have the opportunity and time to take a look at those, you'll see the North Carolina aging profile for Iredell County and for the state um, provided from the Division of Aging. Um, and so I hope you do uh, have the opportunity to take a look at that. But I want to share with you some, some of the things that we have seen um, a really big increase in this year and that we're really proud to uh, really bring into our block grant funding um, is reaching the entire county. Um, and you may look at me and go, but you said all along you reached the entire county, and we do. We reach the county, and as so many of our services, our transportation, our in-home services, and so on. But with our meals, they've always been limited to where someone could be delivered, the meal could be delivered within an hour, and so on. And so in this past year, we have done a pilot program um, with some uh, additional grant funding to serve frozen meals to the entire county. And so we are serving, um, we have served over 400 new individuals in the last uh, eight months with this program. And so when we uh, previously weren't able to serve someone in the Union Grove or Love Valley um, or that Cleveland area that's just right there on the lawn, you know, that we weren't able to serve them because they didn't fall in that hot meal area, we're now able to provide them with five frozen meals once a week. Um, and so we've integrated that program into our block grant funding this year. Additionally, uh, with the senior centers, we've, we've really expanded um, and brought those out into the community. So we have uh, senior centers on the go. And so they're out in the communities meeting at Ruatan clubs, churches, um, because while the senior center is open to anyone and everyone, if you're not able to get there or you're not comfortable in that area, then you're not using that resource. So we've made it really important to bring that resource to the individuals in the community. And what's really fantastic about that is those are the areas of our community where we also see you know, food insecurity. And so we may be out visiting a home and delivering a meal to someone. And while we're there, we see that their steps are not safe for a volunteer. And we're, we're partnering with United Way to work on um, housing repairs. And so we refer that individual and, and make sure that you know they're able to, or they need a box of, of food. And so we've partnered with NC Feed to make sure that they've gotten a box meal or the um, farmer's market vouchers, or you know, um, we're really bringing resources to the entire community. And if I had to reflect on what you know, I'm most proud of that we've accomplished this year, it is that. And bringing those services into our block grant funding um, in this year, you'll see um, some changes where we've increased the amount of funding for home delivered meals. And because we see that that's more of a need than the congregate sites currently are. And so we've, we've adjusted there to, to make up for that and to um, provide those meals across the county. Um, but I just, I thank you again for your continued support. Um, and if you have any questions regarding the funding, I'm happy to answer any of those. This is very helpful and enlightening too. And it not only are you directly, positively impacting, impacting the aging population, but you're impacting their families around them because that allows not just peace of mind, but it also provides an opportunity for people to go to work while the, the adult that can't stay alone Absolutely. is at a safe environment. They can go to work and not worry about that. We talk about the shortage in, in preschool, daycares and things. That's there, but there's also a high need for the aging parent or grandparent, the population there, too. Absolutely. So, and hats off to you with the frozen food idea. I think that's impressive because that it's one trip for those farther distances mm -hmm. to cover for a week, and then they can either microwave or whatever. Absolutely, the and they're able to that. utilize that meal when it's appropriate for them. Right. Yeah, you know, maybe they are. They have someone. Um, 
you know, a granddaughter or something that visits them during the day and she provides lunch, but they need that weekend meal or that evening meal. Um, and we actually just secured funding um, through a Canon Grant Foundation to purchase a small transit vehicle to actually help us with uh, transporting all that. So we're really excited to see that program grow um, and allow it doing the frozen, um, we don't have to adhere to the same Right, the same guidelines, the same guidelines which is what mm -hmm. has held us back in the past. It's not that we don't want to meet that, but you still have Safe to. Safe food handling. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. A lot of pieces on that one. So um, I would invite the other board members yeah. to make comments. I think, uh, you know, everything Commissioner uh, Melissa said. Um, <laughs> What's your last name? Um, <laughs> but, you know, one of the things I think that is, is crucial that you talked about was your the respite care. Mm -hmm. You know, through the, the process and, and knowing people that's provided care to their loved one to give them that moment. Sometimes it's not even a break. Sometimes it's just so they can do their own business. Absolutely. And that is, that's huge that um, so many even within the family don't realize the pressures on some of these people um, and what they go through and Absolutely. the loads and, and the, the, I shouldn't say the burden they carry, but the, but the load that gets placed on that, that, primary caregiver and the time they need sometimes to clear their head or sometimes just to do their own business and they don't even still get any personal time. So Absolutely. That's huge and that's one of the things I've got to see personally through the eyes of other folks that I really applaud your your group for doing. Yes, our our respite care is one of those services that we, one of the very few services that we offer that you, the care recipient um, has to be over the age of 60, but the uh, caregiver does not. So often we have caregivers that are like myself, raising children and also caring for an aging uh, parent that lives in that home. And so, you know, being able to provide those services and that caregiver support truly is um, is a blessing. And our the individual that handles that program just celebrated 20 years with us, and I applaud her for her hard work and dedication for keeping that program going. Um, and thank you for this, this kind words. I serve on this board for us. I'd like for us to consider and, and think about making them whole in that 23,000 or 22,696 shortfall. Because what she mentioned, and she can go over it again if necessary, the hours of care and the meal reductions and the all those things for $23,000 with, you know, they're increasing their area they're servicing, but, you know, these are our elderly people and we've got to take care of them. I think we have a responsibility to do that. And if y'all are good with that, I'd like to see if we could ask Beth to consider where we could pull that from. And if it requires a budget amendment, we could consider that at the next meeting to try to make them whole on this because I'd like to see those cuts reinstated if we can do you have that number funding. on which page is that one? It's twenty three. It's twenty two six ninety six. It's on the back of page one. Wasn't that right? Yeah. Yes, sir. And and she named out the different cuts that that budget that reduction in budget would cause you to do. So if we were able to find that funding, I'd like to ask our board to consider that and reinstate those services and meals and services that you've had to cut. Thank you. Because right now with the economy and, and the challenges we are facing nationally, our citizens, don't, our elderly people especially, nobody should suffer. But these people sometimes, that's the only meal they get. Absolutely. And you'll see that we also, and I'm, I'm just speechless and I appreciate that um, suggestion and that, that gratitude that you're offering. Um, and you'll see on the... Uh, on your uh, budget there that we have had to increase some of the cost of services, the service units, because we have seen an increase in, sure. in tr like transportation with our contractors. And, it's a business. Um, I mean, it is, absolutely. Um, I think our uh, caterer uh, is ready to stop answering my emails because every time he says, let's go up this percent, I'm like, how about this? And so, you know, it's this back and forth. And but it is, and they are they have to do business as well, but um, I, I, I appreciate that. Um, I just, just think it's important. I'd like to ask us to consider that, but, you know, this is an area, if we can make that difference, I, I know it's appreciated because our population is, is increasing in age, and, and population it's, to me, it's our responsibility to take care of our elders and, our you know, our, our, as they age, and 
I'd like for ask us to consider that. All right. Manager Mo, would you follow up with that and add it to the next? Mm -hmm. or the can, absolutely. Let's sure help. 20th agenda. August 20th. On that one, too. Vice Chair Conley, did you have any comments you wanted to share before I just appreciate you doing the job that you do and your staff do. Thank you. Thank you. Tell them thank you for everything. Absolutely. The difference you make in lives every day. We uh, have a, a fantastic staff, and I truly could not do it without them. They uh, make it more than a job. and yeah. Teamwork, isn't it? It's it like is. There's so it much is. more that can be done when you have those extra sets of hands. It, it really, really is. Um, you know, I started the Council on Aging as the program manager at the South Ardell Senior Center and have uh, held multiple positions over the last six years. And, you know, the, the team that you have truly makes um, coming to work a success, but it makes what we're able to do a success. And they, they do believe in what they do, um, and, and it shows every day. So thank you. Absolutely. And Jamal, since we're discussing financial impact and changes, should we just ask for approval of the presentation, or you want to wait until? Um, what you can do is go ahead and do you need to go back and amend your funding plan if we're going to come up with the I additional funding? I will not have to amend the funding plan because I can add it to the special appropriations from the county, I believe. Okay. Mm -hmm. then, then what I would recommend is that we approve the funding plan as presented with that one um, change to special appropriations. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go back, try to figure out where where we're going to pull that. And if we need to come back with a budget amendment, we'll do that at the next meeting. But it won't hold her up. She can okay. go ahead so and she yeah, can go ahead move, and move forward. forward on that one. Then is everyone clear? Mm -hmm. All yes. right. Motion to accept then the presentation and the funding plan. For FY25 Home Community Care Block Grant uh, funding plan with special appropriations allocation. Yes. As help said on that one, too. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are unanimous Thank on you. that one. Thank you very much. Y'all have months. a wonderful evening. Thank you. Have a good evening. All right. We'll continue on down the agenda. And that, yes, it is. Thank you. As we go on to the next category, it is a public hearing this evening. Manager Moll, would you like to get that one rolling with Matthew Todd then? Um, the next item is a public hearing to consider a request from applicant Howard Bryan of Piedmont Landco LLC to rezone approximately 1.273 acres along Murdoch Road. And our screen is going up, but it will come back down because Mr. Todd has a presentation that as soon as we... I assume that was a message not to <laughs> for the presentation. There, here it goes. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, this one is pretty straightforward. It's a, uh, it's okay, I'll go ahead and start. It's a rezoning from an existing RU, R, and HB to general business. Back in October of 23, uh, there was a section behind this track that the board approved the rezoning on, and this left a little donut hole. You can see it on the screen there in blue. Uh, it still leaves a, a property adjacent to it that also the the owner has not signed on with the rezoning. So this is just starting to fill in that donut hole. Um, there's been no opposition expressed at planning board or phone calls of opposition. It's my understanding that owner probably will eventually rezone that piece as well. Uh, staff's recommending it. Planning board voted unanimously to recommend it. Uh, the property fits with the 2045 Horizon Plan Employment Center Industrial Flex. Uh, it was close proximity to the interstate and consistent with the recent rezonings. Uh, that's the land use plan. Currently there is a, a vacant house on it, abandoned house. Just some pictures of the <clears throat> property. Looking back toward the interchange, looking directly across and south toward Troutman. And I'd be happy to answer any questions regarding this request. Just for clarity, the property that's next door, I think it looked like maybe Troutman Animal Hospital. Am I in the right place? Yes. Rip. Yes. Where the concrete is. Where the concrete is, okay. yes. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Okay. At this time, then I will open up the public hearing. And there's no one signed up for it, but I will ask Howard Bryan if he, 
you have anything you'd care to share at this time? Okay. And I don't believe we have anyone else here to speak, so I'm going to close the public hearing on this one. Any other questions or comments on this matter? All right, then I would entertain a motion on this public hearing. Madam Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to approve the zoning map amendment and to make a finding that said approval is consistent with the adopted 2045 horizon plan and is also reasonable and in the public interest because the entirety of the property lies within the 2045 Horizon Plan Employment Center Industrial Flex Office designation, is within close proximity to the I-77 corridor and will be consistent with recent zoning district trends in that area. By Commissioner Halp, all in favor, please say aye. 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 We're unanimous on that. Well, that takes us right into the administrative matters, and um, we discussed during the four o'clock hour. Manager Moll, would you care to go through those, please? The first item was a request from Planning and Development to consider calling for a public hearing on August the 20th, 2024, at 6 o'clock p.m., in regard to a text amendment to the Land Development Code. There was a request from the Sheriff's Office to enter into a three-year contract for an inmate phone and video visitation system with N NCIC, and also that was authorizing the county manager to sign that um, agreement as well. A request from Social Services to review and approve an amendment to the DHHS Iredell County Memorandum of Understanding. The only addition to this was to correct um, the fiscal years. It's intended to be fiscal years 24, 25, and 25, 26. There was a request from Animal Services to approve budget amendment number three to appropriate the first year of a grant from Best Friends Animal Society through Pender County in the amount of $17,780. A request from Animal Services to approve budget amendment number four to utilize donated funds to build a new play yard area and returf the existing play yard. There was a request from the tax office for acceptance of the annual tax settlement of uh, 2023 taxes. A request from fire services to discuss minimum fire response requirements. There was discussion by the board and the board chose by consensus to move forward with option one, which is to divide uh, the district that is currently uh, Wayside Volunteer Fire Department's district between Cool Springs and Troutman Fire Department. There was, a, a, we presented the county construction projects update and that was just for informational purposes only. There was a request from administration for approval of the minutes from the regular meeting on July the 16th, 2024 and the report to the people on July the 22nd, 2024. And the final item was approval to extend the current resolution period for the opioid settlement funds. This action extended the current resolution period to December 31st, 2024. All other parts of that resolution remain the same. A motion to approve the consent agenda. Make a motion to approve. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Unanimous on that approval. And we don't have any announcements of vacancies occurring on boards and commissions, but if you'll notice, there is, and that was one of the adjustments, an appointment to the Home and Community Care Block Grant. There's an appointment for that. You'll see Jimmy Ann Johnson. Idaho County's DSS Adult Services. She is supervisor, so she's got the certainly got the experience on there. All right, we'll need a motion to appoint. I make a motion that we appoint Jimmy Ann Johnson to the uh, Home and Community Care Block Grant. Thank you, Commissioner Stroud. All in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. 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 Thank you. Any unfinished business? No. It is not a public comment <coughs> period. It's time for commissioner updates, and I'd like to kick that one off this evening. And it's interesting that at this time, over at our Ardell County Public Library, we have a gentleman being recognized and in receipt of that he is receiving the Order of the Longleaf Pine from Governor Cooper. He actually received it on July the 23rd of this year, 24. But he is being celebrated this evening. Let me tell you a little bit about this gentleman. I'm sure you'll, you'll recognize the name of O.C. Stone Street III, also known as Chip to some, 
He was known to me as Mr. Stone Street because he was my history teacher at Raleigh Middle School back many years ago. He was born right here in North Carolina in Statesville in 1947 to a Mr. and Mrs. O.C. Stone Street Jr. of Mooresville. He is an Eagle Scout, served in the U.S. Navy during the Vietnam War as part of the Admiral's staff and as a musician. He played trumpet in the Fleet Band. Chip also taught history in the public schools for 31 years and worked part-time teaching writing at Mitchell Community College. He has given numerous presentations and talks on local history and as a columnist for almost 20 years in the Statesville Record and Landmark until it was bought out recently by the outside firm, having published thousands of articles on state interest and history. Chip has published several books on local history, one of which is in the Library of Congress. He has awarded the Order of the Longleaf Pine by Governor Cooper on July 23rd, 2024. So next time you see O.C. floating around, give him a congratulations on that one. And I will pass it over to anyone else who has updates. I don't really have any updates. It's, it's funny, the small circles of life that happens. Um, Mr. Stone Street was a, a teacher of mine. Really? As well. Uh, Mr. Stone Street taught at uh, Central Elementary. And, uh, of course, you know, heard that he was a, actually, if I'm correct, I believe he was a bandsman in the Navy. Um, and to eventually come home and become the veterans officer after my career, and so him as a teacher to be a client to me and someone with a lot of, uh, of knowledge that he readily shared uh, in, in the Love veterans world. Yes. One of the, the most uh, interesting things I, I, I always joke with Mr. Stone Street about in my education years was he was uh, he taught all of his kids in our group. Uh, he taught shop as well. And uh, most of us are members of the Nine Digit Safety Society um, from Mr. Stone Street. Well, that matches up because... He, as well, has a very dry wit sense of humor. Yes. Have you been on the receiving end of that? I have. So we're all members of that nine-digit safety society of where he made sure we didn't have any type of injuries. Um, but one of the projects, and, and still a joke between Mr. Stone Street and I, is we, one year, that year, he, uh, he wanted us to make this particular, he wanted us to learn about another country. And he wanted us to learn about Australia. Mm -hmm. So he was going to teach all of us about Australia, about Australia in classroom, and in shop, we were going to make boomerangs. We all made sticks. <laughs> but I imagine you threw them anyway. Well, we did, uh, and, and, and we all went and got them. Okay. But, but I actually still have my stick that uh, I made in, uh, in shop, and I'm, I, I commonly, uh, uh, when, when O.C. Would, would come by and see me at the veteran's office, I would tell him that... Uh, uh, I still have my stick, and you know he would uh, he would always laugh. And, so. I, and I extended the opportunity for him to come and see us to his son Chris um, after he had let me know about that. But he said at this point he said he didn't know that he would come to a second appearance. However, I let him know that we would be talking about him at length this evening. So, I'm so congratulations, him. Mr. Stone Street. Yes. Do we so. have any OC stories to my right? I didn't realize that we were... Yes. Uh, That's what's wrong with both of us now. So we can pass it on to him. <laughs> is that right? Yes. So. Well, um, updates or comments to my right? Kind of an update. I know we got some cost back on the high school and FF&E numbers. And can we maybe look at maybe putting that on the next meeting, the first meeting of September, so we can discuss that, please? Uh, second meeting in August? August, I'm sorry. August. The first okay. meeting in September, whichever one's the board's happy with. Do you know when the... 90 days is up for them to negotiate with the contractor? Uh, I believe it's September 5th. It's either the end of August or the first week in September. So, so that would be timely 20th. to do the August yeah. 20th. So we do August 20th, I think. Okay. Yeah. And also, I'd like to remind everybody, just not too far down the road here, the uh, tropical depression, storm, hurricane, everything that people are affected by, uh, we may get affected by that as here as well, but we need to keep those people in our prayers. People have already lost their lives and stuff, so yes. it's a very serious thing. And it's uh, you know we can remember problems that we've had here in this county and stuff. So yes. very long ago we had some problems too. So we need to remember those folks and keep them in our prayers. Indeed, thank you. A couple things for me. Um, 
I'll be in Forsyth County starting tomorrow for the NCACC annual conference that I'm the delegate of and board meeting. Um, I was elected to a fourth term as the District 12 Director for Cabarrus, Gaston, Ireland, Lincoln, Rowan, Stanley, Union, and Mecklenburg two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, and there'll be a formal uh, PR for that. But also I wanted to, you, Melissa, and Beth, and Matthew got an email from Vicki Sawyer. Will y'all look at that and see what date y'all may be available, if possible, for either August 19th or August 31st. The topic she wants to talk to us about in staff is she's wanting to do some type of legislation potentially to help with the orphan roads problem within the county where people, where developers have come in typically in the ETJs and the developers have either, have either failed to do all their due diligence and or the roads now need um, maintenance and the HOAs either didn't communicate, weren't aware, whatever the problem was, that was their responsibilities because it was not turned over to DOT. In the past, we've tried to get, uh, and tap in when you're ready, Beth, is in the past, we've tried to get legislation for the NCACC to where there's some type of um, interlocal agreement between the counties and municipalities and the ETJ to where because it's the municipalities in that ETJ's responsibility for all the zoning and all of those things for the developers and builders in those areas. And, but in the past, there's been some uh, bonds released that maybe shouldn't have been released before the projects were checked and finished. Is that a fair way to say that? So what, she, what she's wanting to do is meet with us and get some ideas from staff, what legislation would look like to just dot I's, cross T's, and potentially, some counties have even started some type of um, <clears throat> program that the state could either help pay or get funding for that we would allocate for <clears throat> in some of these HOAs to um, look at a repayment plan from the HOAs if there was a loan out to the HOA to do some of these repairs, which I don't know what that looks like. It's just I'm just letting you guys know that's the request for the meeting. And or at a minimum, when the developers get these roads and all up to minimum DOT standards, the goal in the future would be to get the HOA to agree up front in writing that they know they're taking it over, mm -hmm. or to have them, the developer request DOT to take over maintenance and upkeep of these roads while they're just DOT standards. And that's not being done. And so she's looking for our help and to try to figure out a way to push legislation. And I know the NCACC, this is a bipartisan effort. It's impacted all counties mm -hmm. to some degree, especially the growth counties to where some of these I's are not getting dotted and T's crossed. And the citizens, when the time comes to maintain these things, they're looking at us to do that and it never was our responsibility to do it. So if we can figure out legislation that helps prevent that, and potentially some funding, grant funding, that may help these existing orphaned roads in the county to be brought up to standards and ask the state to take them over. She's just looking for our help to identify what that legislation will look like. And she's working on identifying the road, the actual roads themselves. That, and she's wanting staff's help of identifying all the orphaned roads in our county. And then our input, I, I think she sent you and I, and if anyone else is wanting to do it, you know, that's fine. Um, Matthew and Beth's involvement or anybody else Beth thinks is necessary to just look and give her lots of ideas of how a remedy, what a remedy will look like. Because there's a desire to get that done in the legislature because it, it's technically a bipartisan problem. Sure. Okay. And so those two things are all that I had for you. Okay. All right, then we'll continue on down. Um, no new business. County manager's report. Has that changed since four o'clock or is it the same? Nothing to report. Nothing to report. All right, then. We did have a closed session in regards to attorney client and economic development with no information to move forward or action to report out. So at this time, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Halp. All in favor, please say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Mm -hmm.